The bear put spread option strategy is a bearish strategy that profits when the stock price decreases, but has a limited loss potential when the stock price increases. The bear put spread is one of the four vertical spread option strategies. Compared to shorting 100 shares of stock, the bear put spread has limited loss potential if the stock price increases, while shorting shares of stock has unlimited loss potential since there's no limit to how much a stock's price can increase, which means there's no limit to how much the loss potential can be when shorting shares of stock. The bear put spread will also typically have a much higher return potential compared to shorting 100 shares of stock because the margin requirement for shorting 100 shares of stock will usually be far more significant than buying a put spread. In this video, I'm going to visually explain to you exactly how the bear put spread option strategy works. I'm gonna show you numerous historical trade examples that use real option data so you can see how bear put spreads have performed in the past based on various stock price scenarios. Lastly, I'll show you how to set up a bear put spread using the Tastyworks brokerage platform, so be sure to stay tuned. The bear put spread option strategy is a bearish position that profits when the stock price decreases, but also has limited loss potential if the stock price were to increase. Other names for the bear put spread strategy include the long put spread, the put debit spread, or simply buying a put spread. The bear put spread strategy consists of two separate option transactions occurring at the same time. The first transaction is buying a put option and the second transaction is selling a put option but at a lower strike price than the option that was purchased. By selling a put option against the put option that was purchased, the position will have less profit potential compared to just buying a put all by itself. Let's take a look at a hypothetical long put spread position, look at the expiration profit and loss graph, and then we'll move on to some real trade examples to see the strategy in action. For this bear put spread example, the stock price at the time of entering the position is $135. I'm going to construct the bear put spread from the following options. First, I'm gonna buy the 130 put option for $5, and then I'm going to sell the 120 put option for $2. Since I paid $5 for the 130 put, and I received $2 for selling the 120 put, the net debit paid in this example is $3. In options trading, if you pay more premium than you receive when entering a position, you are said to enter the position for a net debit. In this example, a trader would say that they are purchasing the 130, 120 put spread for a net debit of $3. Let's take a look at the expiration profit and loss graph for this particular bear put spread position. In this graph, we're looking at the profit and loss figures for this particular bear put spread position based on various stock prices at the time of expiration. So where do these profit and loss figures come from? The maximum loss potential of a bear put spread position is the net debit paid times 100. In this example, since I paid $3 for the position overall, the maximum loss potential is $300. So the net debit of $3 times 100 gives me a maximum loss potential of $300 for every put spread purchased. The maximum loss potential of a bear put spread is realized if the stock price is at or above the long puts strike price at expiration. That's because if the stock price is at or above the long put strike price at expiration, both of the put options in the spread will expire worthless and therefore the spread's value at expiration will be zero dollars. The maximum profit potential of a bear put spread position is the width of the strikes less the net debit paid for entering the trade times 100. In this example, the spread width is $10 and the net debit paid is $3, which gives me a maximum profit potential of $700. And that comes from the $10 strike width less the $3 net debit paid, which comes out to a $7 maximum gain per spread. And if I multiply that by the option contract multiplier of 100, I get a maximum profit potential of $700 per put spread that was purchased. The maximum profit potential will occur if the stock price is at or below the short put strike price at expiration, because at any price below the short put strike price, both options will be fully in the money and the spread will expire with its maximum value of the strike width. If I purchase this spread for $3 and it increases to its maximum value of $10, that would represent a $7 gain per spread. And if I multiply that $7 gain by the option contract multiplier of 100, I get a maximum profit potential of $700 per put spread that was purchased. The break even price of a bear put spread position is the long put strike price less the debit paid, 
which in this example, since I'm buying the 130 put option or the long puts strike price is $130 and I paid $3 for this spread, the break even price for this particular bear put spread at expiration is $127. At $127, the 130 put option will expire with $3 of intrinsic value and the 120 put option will expire worthless, which means the net value of the 130, 120 put spread at expiration will be $3 if the stock price is exactly at $127, which means I break even on the trade. Now that we've looked at a hypothetical bear put spread trade, Let's go ahead and look at some historical bear put spread examples so you can see how the strategy has performed in the past based on real stock price movements. In this first example, we're gonna look at a scenario where the bear put spread ends up with the maximum profit potential at the time of expiration. Here are the trade details. At the time of entering this position, the stock price was at $104.08. The options used in this example had 35 days until expiration. To construct the bear put spread position, I bought the 115 put option for $15.85, and I sold the 100 put option for $7.35. The net debit in this example is $8.50, since I paid $15.85 for the 115 put and collected $7.35 for selling the 100 put. $15.85 minus $7.35 gives me a net debit of $8.50. The maximum profit potential of this position is $650 per put spread, which comes from the $15 strike width, less the $8.50 debit paid times 100, which gives me a maximum profit potential of $650 per spread. If I buy a spread for $8.50 and its price increases to $15, I will have a $6.50 gain per spread, and when I multiply that by the option contract multiplier of 100, I get a profit of $650 per spread. The maximum loss potential in this example is $850, and that stems from the $8.50 debit paid times 100. If I buy a spread for $8.50 and it expires worthless, my loss will be $850 per spread. The expiration breakeven price for this put spread is $106.50. Let's take a look at how this trade performed. On the top of this chart, we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to the put spread strike prices. On the bottom of the chart, we're looking at the price changes of the put spread itself. The bear put spread in this example was profitable over almost the entire duration of the trade as the stock price was gradually losing value and was below the short put strike price of $100 almost the entire time. With the stock price below the short put strike price of $100, the spread's value slowly inched towards its maximum valuation of $15 as all of the extrinsic value came out of the options as time passed. You might be wondering why the put spread's value was not $15 the moment the stock price fell below $100 because at that point, the put spread was fully in the money so why was the spread's value not the width of the strikes or $15? The reason is that for vertical spreads to achieve their maximum profit potential, all of the extrinsic value must come out of the options, which means the options must be extremely far in the money or they must have very little time until expiration or some combination of the two. In this example, we can see that the spread's value was just under $15 with 11 days until expiration, which tells us that the spread was so far in the money and that the options had so little extrinsic value that the spread was already trading for almost its maximum value of $15, even though there were still 11 days until expiration. At the time of expiration, the put spread's value was $15, which means in this example, the maximum profit of $650 was realized. This example demonstrates the perfect scenario for a bear put spread, as the stock price continued to decrease immediately after the put spread was purchased, and at expiration, the stock price was fully below both put spread strike prices. In this example, we're gonna look at a bear put spread that ends up with the maximum loss potential at expiration. Here are the trade details. At the time of entering the trade, the stock price was $127.88, and the options used in this example had 31 days until expiration. To construct the bear put spread, I purchased the 132 put option for $4.93, and sold the 128 put option for $2.13. In this example, the net debit is $2.80, 
since I paid $4.93 for the 132 put and collected $2.13 for selling the 128 put. 4.93 minus 2.13 gives me a net debit paid of $2.80. The maximum profit potential of this position is $120 per spread, and that's because the spread width is $4 and I paid $2.80 for the spread. That means the most the spread can appreciate in my favor is the difference between its maximum value of $4 and what I paid for it, which is $2.80. If I buy a spread for $2.80 and its price increases to $4, that would represent a $1.20 gain per spread, and when I multiply that by the option contract multiplier of 100, the profit per spread comes out to $120. The maximum loss potential in this case is $280, which comes from the $2.80 debit paid times the option contract multiplier of 100, which comes out to a maximum loss potential of $280. The expiration break-even price in this example is $129.20, and that comes from the long put strike price of 132 less the debit paid of $2.80. Let's take a look and see what goes wrong with this particular example. In this example, the trader buys an in the money put spread, which means both of the spread's options are in the money at the time of entering the trade. This is a high probability trading setup because for this position to make money, since both options are already in the money at the time of entering the trade, all that has to happen is the stock price has to remain at its current level or decrease and the position will make money over time. The downside of buying an in the money spread is that you pay more for the spread since it is a higher probability trade and therefore you have more to lose and less to gain on that particular spread, which explains why in this particular example, the profit potential is $120 while the loss potential is $280. That tells me that this is a high probability trade, meaning the probability of making money is above 50% in theory. Unfortunately, the stock price increased gradually over the entire trade duration, which resulted in a lower and lower put spread value over time. At expiration, the stock price was just below the long put strike price of 132, which means that the 132 put option had just a few pennies of intrinsic value at expiration, while the 128 put option expired worthless. Therefore, the value of the 132, 128 put spread in this example was just a few pennies at expiration, which means the loss on the position was right near its maximum loss potential of $280. Now that we've looked at a few long put spread positions that were profitable and unprofitable, what does it look like to actually set up a bear put spread position using real trading software? In this example, I'm gonna use the Tastyworks desktop trading platform and show you exactly how to set up a bear put spread position. Be sure to check the link in the description to learn how you can get one of our courses completely free when you open and fund your first Tastyworks brokerage account using the project option referral code. Right now I'm on the Tastyworks trading platform and currently I have up the chart of SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF. As we can see here, SPY recently fell off of a price level of around $295 per share and then plummeted to around $272 per share, only to rally all the way back, and currently SPY is at $292.40. So if I was a trader that was looking to initiate a bear put spread, meaning I was going to purchase a put option and then sell a put option at a lower strike price, personally, I would use this resistance level, so to speak, to construct my bear put spread because if I was a trader that believed SPY was going to test this resistance level and then trade back lower, I can use that to my advantage to construct a bear put spread position. And the way I would do that is I would put my long put strike price right around this 295 price level and then I would purchase a put option at a lower strike price to complete the spread. So to do that, I'm going to click over to the trade page and I do that by clicking on the trade tab right to the left of this chart in between the watch list and the chart area. And when I click on the trade tab, it pops open the option chain. And currently I'm looking at the August 2019 option cycle, which I can open and close by just clicking directly on the option cycle itself. So the August 2019 option cycle has 59 days to expiration. And as I said, I was going to look at purchasing the 295 put option and selling the 295 put option, which would create a $5 wide bear put spread. And to do that, I click on the ask price of the 295 put. 
and then click on the bid price of the 290 put. If you're not familiar with the bid and ask prices, the bid price is the highest price someone is willing to pay for an option. So that's what I would want to collect for selling an option is the highest price I can collect for that option. And the ask price is the lowest price someone is willing to sell an option for. So that means I'm going to click on the ask price. Now when I click on the ask price of the 295 put and click on the bid price of the 290 put, it queues up in order to potentially trade the 295, 290 put spread, but this is not an executed order itself. This is just queuing it up so that it can show me the price of the spread and all of the relevant metrics around this particular spread. As we can see here, the 295, 290 put spread expiring in 59 days is currently trading for about $2. And to make the math easier, I'm going to just click the price down to $2. As we know, the maximum profit potential of a bear put spread is the strike width less the premium paid for the spread times 100. And since this is a $5 wide put spread, if I pay $2 for a $5 wide spread, the most I can make per spread is $3 since if the price increases from $2 to $5, that is a $3 gain per spread. And when I multiply by the option contract multiplier of 100, I get a maximum profit potential of $300 per spread. And we can see that listed right here on the platform. As we know, the maximum loss potential is simply the amount paid for the spread times the option contract multiplier of 100. And that gives me a maximum loss potential of $200. So in this particular spread, I have a maximum loss potential of $200 and a maximum profit potential of $300. And that's a pretty favorable scenario considering the break-even price of this spread is right at $293. So I need SPY to be below $293 per share and I will make money on this spread. Now the reason this spread looks very favorable to me is because the maximum profit is $300, the maximum loss potential is $200 which generally means that this is a low probability trade since there's more profit potential than loss potential. But in this particular instance, the probability of profit is listed right around 49% or right around 50%. And if I go over to the curve view to visually analyze this trade, if I click over to the curve view and make sure analysis is checked, we can visually analyze the risk and reward potential for this particular put spread. Now the reason this spread is particularly attractive to me is because the break-even price is at $293, but SPY is already below the break-even price of $293 since SPY is currently trading for $292.40. So this was just a really quick walkthrough of how you can go about setting up a bear put spread on the Tastyworks platform, and I've also offered up some insights as to the logic behind this particular spread. And in this case, I liked this price level of purchasing the 295 put because if SPY hits this resistance level up here and then trades back downwards, obviously that's going to be favorable for my spread because this resistance level kind of serves as a defense mechanism against realizing the maximum loss potential of the spread, which would occur if SPY was above $295 at expiration. To wrap up this video, I'm gonna go through a few frequently asked questions in regards to the bear put spread option strategy. The first frequently asked question is, can you close a bear put spread before its expiration date, or do you have to hold the position through expiration once you've entered it? The answer is that you can always close an option position before expiration, and you never have to hold an option position through its expiration date, even if you've already entered the trade. In the case of a bear put spread, since entering the trade consisted of buying a put option and selling a put option at a lower strike price, to close the bear put spread position, all you have to do is sell the put option that you purchased and buy back the put option that you sold. And when you do that, you will close your spread for whatever price it's currently trading for, and therefore you will lock in whatever profit or loss you had at that moment. The second frequently asked question is, can you let the spread expire in the money or should you close the spread on its expiration date and avoid anything that happens after expiration? The answer is yes, you can hold a bear put spread through expiration if it is in the money, but there are some things you should know. The first thing is that if both options are fully in the money, you will not end up with any share position if you hold the options through expiration 
but your brokerage firm will charge you exercise and assignment fees. If only the long put is in the money and the short put is out of the money at expiration, meaning the stock price is anywhere in between the two strikes at expiration. If you hold those put options through expiration, you will end up with short shares of stock since you will automatically exercise those long puts that expired in the money. For instance, if you bought 10 put spreads and only the long puts were in the money at expiration and you held those long puts through expiration, since you owned 10 put contracts that you allowed to expire in the money, you would end up with 1,000 shares of short stock after letting those 10 long put options expire in the money. That's a wrap on the bear put spread option strategy. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you're more comfortable with how the bear put spread option strategy works. Be sure to check out the links in the description for additional resources. I'm Chris from projectoption.com and I will see you in the next video.